Chapter 45 is called Some Soup. Cook stirred the soup and then put the spoon down and held up the candle and looked over at Despereau. What you waiting for? She said, go, go. There'll never be another opportunity for a mouse to escape from the kitchen unharmed. The smell of soup again wafted in Despereau's direction. He put his nose up in the air. His whiskers trembled. Yes, said Cook, that is soup you're smelling. The princess, not that she'd know or care, is missing, bless her good-hearted self. And times are terrible. And when times are terrible, soup is the answer. Don't it smell like the answer? Yes, said Despero. He nodded. Cook turned away from him. She put the candle down and picked up her spoon and started to stir. Oh, she said, these are dark days. She shook her head. And I'm kidding myself. There ain't no point in making soup unless others eat it. Soup needs another mouth to taste it, another heart to be warmed by it. She stopped stirring. She turned and looked at Despero. Mouse, said Cook, would you like some soup? And then, without waiting for an answer, she took a saucer and spooned some soup into it and set it on the kitchen floor. Come closer, she said. I don't aim to hurt you, I promise. Despero sniffed. The soup smelled wonderful, incredible. Keeping one eye on Cook, he stepped out from behind the spool of thread and crept closer. Go on, said Cook. Taste it. Despero stepped into the saucer. Soup covered his paws. He bent his head into the hot broth. He sipped. Ooh, it was lovely. Garlic and chicken and watercress. The same soup that Cook had made the day the Queen had died. How is it? Said Cook, asked Cook anxiously. Wonderful, said Despero. Too much garlic, said Cook, wringing her fat hands. No, said Despero. It's perfect. Cook smiled. See, she said, there ain't a body, be it mouse or a man, that ain't made better by a little soup. Despero bent his head and sipped again, and Cook stood over him and smiled, saying, it don't need a thing then. Is that what you're saying? It's just right. Despero nodded. He drank the soup in big, noisy gulps, and when he stepped out of the saucer, his paws were damp, and his whiskers were dripping, and his stomach was full. Cook said to him, not done already, are ya? Surely you ain't done, you must want more. I can't, said Despero, I don't have time. I'm on my way to the dungeon to save the princess. Ha! Cook laughed, you, a mouse, are going to save the princess? Yes, said Despero, I'm on a quest. Well, don't let me stand in your way. And so it was that Cook held open the door to the dungeon while Despero rolled the spool of thread through it. Good luck, she said to him. Ha! Good luck saving the princess. She closed the door behind her and then leaned against it and shook her head. And if ain't that an indicator of what strange days these are, she said to herself, then I don't know what is. Me, Cook, feeding a mouse soup and then wishing him good luck in saving the princess. Oh my, strange days indeed. And that's the end of the chapter. Does Cook believe that Despero can really save the princess? No. How do we know? Yeah, because she kind of laps at him, right? And is like, good luck. How's a mouse going to save a human princess? I don't know. Let's keep going.